Hello interwebs and welcome to my channel. So as many of you may know from watching some of my other Star Trek videos, I am a huge Star Trek book nerd and it's kind of self-evident here. I have over 300 Star Trek books that I've been collecting since I was a little kid. In fact, the way I actually got into Star Trek was through books in a way. The first uh, Star Trek thing I ever heard was Star Trek Nemesis, the audiobook. My dad was playing it in his car for some reason, and uh, I just fell in love with that story and kind of snuck and stole his CDs that he had of it and listened to the whole thing and then didn't realize that that was kind of like the worst starting place for someone to like Star Trek and then sort of found everything else from there. But I've always been such a huge fan of the sort of Star Trek literary verse. And I kind of get upset that a lot of people look down on the Star Trek book literary universe. And it's sad because I honestly think that some of the best storytelling in Star Trek actually comes from the books. There's just such a plethora and wealth of really cool stories that kind of dive into these interesting concepts and character studies in a way that the TV show can't actually do. It's kind of the discussion that everyone has, is the book better or the movie? And I think tie-in novels, just in general, not just in Star Trek, kind of get a bad rap for that. So for this video, I actually wanted to share with you some of my favorite Star Trek books. Now, this is by no means going to be my favorite of all time, but I'm going to be sort of giving this as sort of a primer some, for some really interesting starting places that I think some people might actually like to sort of jump into. And if you guys like this video, please let me know because I will do more and I'll do more dives into some of the Star Trek books and maybe do in-depth talks about specific books, or I will do more of these book recommendations and give you some of my more favorite Star Trek books. More favorite. That's a word. That was what I just said. Well, we'll leave it in. The first book that I'm going to be recommending today is actually the first book in the Star Trek New Frontier series. Uh, it's called House of Cards. It's not, it's right there on the front page. It's not on the front cover though, which is weird. Star Trek New Frontier was a really cool concept created by Peter David. It was one of the first Star Trek series that wasn't actually tied to one of the main shows, Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, Enterprise, the original series, all that stuff. A lot of books have come out after that have sort of expanded on the Star Trek world, like the Starfleet Corps of Engineers and things like that. But New Frontier was one of the first and one of the longest running. There's a lot of books in that series, but it, they're all a lot of fun and I, I highly recommend them. And they take Star Trek into new and interesting ways that you don't see on the show. And it sort of created a whole new crew, a whole new ship, and dove into their stories. And I think the only character that's a regular throughout the entire New Frontier series that actually appeared on the show is Shelby. Commander Shelby is the first officer. But this series follows uh, Captain Calhoun, who is right there on the front cover, and he's a Zenexian. On his planet, he was a childhood warrior and sort of led a resistance against this sort of ruling class on his planet of Zenex. But then as he grows older, he becomes a Starfleet officer, but he has a much more sort of aggressive, ready to fight sort of view on things than Picard or any other Star Trek captain. But he is still a really good Starfleet captain. And the New Frontier series really kind of delves into this new ship and crew in a very interesting way. And this book is the first of a four part introduction. They're only, they're very short. It's actually only like 200 pages or so, not even, not even that, like 150 pages each for the first four books, and then they become sort of regular sized novels. And it's a really cool story, uh, really cool characters that come up. They even have like a non-binary character at one point for a lot of the series. Uh, so I'd really recommend checking out the New Frontier series starting out with Star Trek uh, House of Cards. Another really interesting series, speaking of series that don't really tie into anything directly, is uh, Star Trek Vanguard. Star Trek Vanguard is a really cool series that really aimed to try to be something more akin to Lost, and actually uh, was sort of a precursor to Star Trek Discovery, where it's a bit darker, a bit uh, more serialized, uh, a lot of character study going on, but it's set during the original series as well, following a space station. And deals a lot with the politics of the Tholian Assembly and some really cool areas of the original series that never really got enough light, in my opinion, especially the Tholians. It's sort of looking at the sort of dark underbelly of a lot of different organizations that we only kind of touched upon, like the Orions, the Tholians, the Klingon Empire in the original series. So 
Star Trek Vanguard, really good place to start. It has a beginning, middle, and end. And actually, a lot of the uh, stuff that goes on in these books ties into books later on in the Star Trek literary verse, that they actually start bringing a lot of the storylines that this book created even 100 years uh, later in the lit verse. All right, so I've talked about two books that really aren't tied into any specific Star Trek series. So I want to talk about one that was really written as if it could have been an episode of the show. And this was one of my favorite books when I was growing up, when I was first starting to read Star Trek books, and that is Star Trek Voyager Echoes. So this is a really, really cool book because it deals with multiverse and different universes. So this is going to be a little bit complicated, but bear with me. The Voyager encounters a planet that at a certain interval, I forget the amount of time, but at a certain interval, basically everyone in the planet shifts over one universe, the universe right next to theirs. So we get this cool visual of every one of these intervals that you see these planets stretching out into infinity and then stretching out into infinity the other way, basically both directions. And everyone on the planet in this universe or the universe that they're in goes over to the next planet, just suddenly transports that next planet. What the problem with that is, obviously besides just switching universes, and that's kind of concerning, but one of the planets has actually been destroyed in one of the universes. All the people on that planet, when they transfer to that universe, suddenly end up in space with no air to breathe and they're just, they're left there to die. So Voyager comes upon this planet and they kind of have to be like, how do we save, you know, this planetary genocide from happening over and over and over and over again. And there's this also this really cool conceit of the fact that only every other universe has a Voyager. So when it stretches out infinity, you can see a Voyager at all these planets, but only every other one. Because of a previous episode of Voyager, I forget the exact one, but the one where the Harry Kim from another universe joins our Voyager, his Voyager got destroyed. So the Voyager on every other universe has been essentially destroyed. You see different versions from different universes of the different Voyager crews trying to come together to solve this problem of how do we stop people from shifting universes. Really cool concept, really cool story. It could have been a cool episode of Voyager. I mean, the visuals were there, the stories were there. Definitely uh, a lot of fun there. All right, moving on. This is actually another book series that I really loved when I was growing up, and it's called Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Now, there are 10 of these books, and basically they are Star Trek short story collections. And actually, they are written by Star Trek writers who have never written a Star Trek story before. So if you're a brand new Star Trek writer, you could have submitted to this Strange New Worlds anthology, and if you won, you got to have your story in the book and have it actually published, which was honestly really cool and a lot of writers that actually still write today you see some of their first star trek stories in these collections and they only went for 10 books of these they did one every year for 10 years and i'm recommending number eight specifically now they're all great pick up any of the strange new world books i highly recommend them please check them out there's even a kindle version of one that came out a year or so ago sort of restarting the program i recommend eight specifically because there's a story in here called alpha and omega and it's about the Q Continuum meeting the Borg Collective uh, in a really interesting and cool way. It's actually one of my favorite uh, Star Trek stories that you can find in Star Trek literature. And it's written by a brand new Star Trek writer. And that's just insanely cool. But you get a bunch of different stories. You get a few from every series, Star Trek. Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, Enterprise, they weren't out at the time of Discovery, unfortunately. Um, and then some speculation stuff that really aren't tied to any series specifically. And for the last one that I'm going to recommend for this episode is uh, actually a comic, and it's Star Trek The Next Generation Mirror Broken. This came out actually a few years ago, I think just like two or three years ago, and it basically features a story of the Next Generation crew in the Mirror Universe. It was sort of a missed opportunity that we never actually got to see the Next Generation crew have a Mirror Universe episode like we did in Deep Space Nine, Enterprise, and Discovery, and the original series. Voyager didn't get one either, but they dealt with parallel universes enough that I think it's fine. This sort of delves into what the Next Generation crew is doing during the time of like the Cardassian Klingon Alliance and what happened to the Terran Empire. Does the Terran Empire still exist? You get some really cool twists on some of our favorite characters, like Reginald Barkley is actually a security officer and super confident. Data is a cyborg who, who doesn't want to try and be more human, but actually is just trying to better himself using other technology. And so he like puts a Borg arm on him and stuff like this. And John Luke Picard is like this jacked dude. Um, so it's a really, really cool Star Trek story that is actually still being continued today. They're actually doing more and more comics following this sort of storyline. And they did another one that sort of had the next generation crew from our universe meet the mirror universe crew but the reason i recommend this one uh besides it being the first one is jk woodward uh does the art for these and he's done art on a lot of different star trek stories but his art is just 
absolutely gorgeous. He actually does watercolor paintings of all of his panels. They are simply astounding, some of the art in this story. So I'd highly recommend Star Trek The Next Generation uh, Mirror Broken. And obviously there, if you want another Star Trek um, Mirror Universe Next Generation story, there's a novel called Dark Mirror that was actually another Star Trek Next Generation Mirror Universe story. It doesn't really tie in the same canon and a lot of the stuff that went on in that book kind of got retconned with the Deep Space Nine Mirror Universe episodes. But this one does fit within the sort of canon of Deep Space Nine. And that's it. That's everything I wanted to recommend for Star Trek books today. I still have a ton more recommendations. So if you liked this video and want some more Star Trek books, please let me know in the comments below. Let me know some of your favorite books and uh, hopefully I get to do more of these if it sort of uh, finds enough interest with you guys and until next time live long and prosper hey interwebs thank you so much for watching this video if you like this and want even more analysis of geek topics on everything from star trek to dc comics or you want social and political analysis and discussions or social and political discussions through geek topics give my channel a subscribe and if you want to actively help make my videos even better consider giving to my Patreon page. Each and every bit helps make these videos truly awesome, and there are some cool perks and benefits of being a Patreon, like having your name listed below just like these wonderful, amazing people. And special thanks to my Admiral-level Patreons, Stephen Schuhart, Wellington Marcus, and Lol. Thank you so much. I, I can't tell you how thankful I am for for everything you guys have given. It, it, it really means the world to me. But regardless of if you subscribe or give to my Patreon, I hope that all of you live long and prosper.